please may I ask you to be upstanding for the academic procession. Thank you all very much. Please be seated. <coughs> Graduates, alumni, speakers, parents, friends, supporters, distinguished guests and colleagues, welcome to this very special occasion to mark the graduation of the Harper class of 2021. Let us begin by thanking our wonderful musicians from Senate Brass who are providing an outstanding accompaniment to today's proceedings. <clears throat> <clears throat> Many of you have had long journeys to be with us today, with some traveling from the Far East, other regions of the world, and the different domains of the United Kingdom to be part of our celebration. Whilst I was not the Vice Chancellor when you were completing the award we will acknowledge and celebrate today, it is my great pleasure to be with you and to have the opportunity to lead this extraordinary university. Graduation ceremonies are very special moments in the life of a university community. Whilst today's celebration comes some time after you received your award, it makes it no less important, as can be seen by how many people have come together to the, the campus. We gather together to acknowledge, reflect on, and celebrate the individual achievement of every single one of our graduating students. The award you have received is a mark of academic achievement and excellence from one of the world's leading specialist agri-food universities. A degree and qualification from Harper Adams University is highly valued. It is intended to be challenging, practically and intellectually. 
you will have had highs and lows during your studies, and there may well have been occasions at which you had severe self-doubt. Today's ceremony acknowledges any Today's ceremony acknowledges your determination and dedication. You overcame all barriers standing in your way and demonstrated that you are more than worthy to join our global community of Harper graduates. You deserve all of our congratulations and we are proud of your exceptional achievements. It probably feels like it's been a while since you first set foot on this campus and today might feel like the end of a long journey. In actual fact, Today is just a new beginning. You'll be joining a community of over 25,000 alumni of Harper Adams. And like them, I hope that you'll get involved in our alumni association, the Harper Club, and continue to stay connected with the university and future generations of students. I look forward to seeing you at alumni events and seminars. And when you're ready to return to education to refresh your knowledge, I hope you will look to your university for that. We've tried to give you a flavour of just some of the university's work and our ongoing connection with alumni in the graduation brochure that you've got on each of your seats. I hope that you will take this away as a souvenir of the special day. And our Chancellor, Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal, was delighted to include a message for this year. It is wonderful to see so many parents, guardians, family members and friends with us today. You have played a critical part in supporting our students during their time at Harper Adams, emotionally, practically, and of course, financially. You've been amazing, and this ceremony is also an occasion to recognize the contribution you have made to the success of our graduates. <clears throat> now, I know you'll be feeling a mixture of emotions, pride, joy, in some cases, tearful, in some cases nervous that your family member is about to trip up in their new shoes as they walk across the stage to collect their certificate. A Harper Adams degree ceremony is rightly a formal occasion, but it shouldn't be stuffy. So I would encourage you to feel free to express your emotions and joy in whatever way you like. Feel free to clap, whoop, shed tears, but definitely take photographs. This is a unique day, a special day, so make sure that you capture it. So to set the tone, test your voices, test your hands, I'd like to encourage our graduates to clap their hands, raise their voices, stamp their feet, and acknowledge the support they've had from their families and supporters, as well as Harper Ad Harper's academic and professional service employees. Graduates, over to you. <clears throat> <clears throat> So family members, supporters, that's the minimum amount of clapping that we're looking for. And just to say, 2021, you clapped louder than 2020, which was on Monday, so congratulations. <laughs> this year's degree ceremonies have even greater significance. Rep remarkably, the last time such a ceremony took place on this land was three years ago, back in 2019. None of us could have known at that point that COVID-19 would cast its shadow across every aspect of our life and create additional challenges across three academic years. Thanks to the resilience and inventiveness of our students and employees, we were able to maintain teaching research and our future farm throughout the pandemic. Of course, we needed to adapt and change, to find new ways to work, teach, and maintain the sense of community, which is central to universities like Harper Adams. Things didn't always go according to plan. But I believe that everyone who studied at this university during this historic chapter will have gained additional skills and maturity, which will make them even more valuable citizens, both at home and in work. By working together and supporting each other, everyone remained focused on learning and the acquisition of knowledge, as well as supporting each other. Now, the university has achieved a huge amount since that last ceremony in 2019. I will highlight just a few of them to remind you of the high regard in which this institution is held across the university sector, but also the, in the industries with which we partner. We opened the Harper Keel Vet School, a stunning and innovative collaboration and unique in our country. According to Graduate Outcomes 2021, national figures show that Harper Adams has a higher proportion of UK-based graduates in work or further study than any other university. In the most recent National Student Survey published last week, 
we were ranked fifth of all UK universities for overall student satisfaction of our full-time students. And thanks to the feedback from our own students, the What University Student Choice Awards, the Wuskers, has awarded us the best university in the country for career prospects every year since 2016. A truly remarkable achievement. In the most recent Times and Sunday Times University Guide, we were top-rated modern university for the sixth successive year. Similarly, the publication of the Complete University Guide places 29th best university in the UK, but once again, the top-ranked modern university. The Research Excellence Framework confirmed that 60% of our research is of world and international standing, a wonderful achievement. And then finally, in this year's New Year's Honours, I was delighted to see that my predecessor, Dr. David Llewellyn, who was Vice-Chancellor when you were studying, was made a Commander of the Order of the British Empire, CBE, for his services to higher education, agriculture, and rural industries. David served this institution for 23 years, 12 of those as Principal and then Vice-Chancellor, and I'm sure we would want to pass on our congratulations, best wishes, and thanks to David for his contribution to Harper Adams over almost a quarter of a century. Often vice chancellors will use their speech to flag prizes and awards that have been gained by students and employees. Given the temperature inside and out, you might be relieved to know that I'm going to resist that temptation. I know you'll be looking forward to a celebratory drink or two or three or four after the ceremony and quite simply, there are just too many prizes and awards to list in person. Instead, I'll just simply congratulate all of our award winners and prize winners, especially those who join us today who received a final year or postgraduate prize. And also to thank all of the sponsors of prizes for their generous and inspirational support. One of the most confronting things that can happen in a university is when a student dies during their studies or in the time when they become a member of our alumni community. Their tragic loss is felt by everyone in our community, especially their fellow students, those who taught them and supported them, and of course, their families. I would like to acknowledge, celebrate, and give thanks for the students and alumni we have lost. I would also like to recognize Caroline Drummond, holder of an honorary degree. Honorary fellows Peel Holroyd, Peter Bloxham, and former principal Tony Harris, and our treasured and much missed leader in entomology, Professor Simon Leather, all of whom recently passed away following many years of partnership or service to this university. In the year ahead, we will launch a peace garden on campus, which we hope will provide a place of reflection to connect everyone we have lost to the lands on which we study, work, and grow. At a time when we look to the future with confidence and hope, I'm afraid I must reflect on the desperately sad situation in Ukraine and the impact that Russia's war is having on its people, including Ukraine's excellent universities and its critically important agri-food industry, which, as we know, is presenting a new threat to food supply and security around the world, including here in the UK. As I mentioned earlier, a degree from this university is highly valued. As the world grapples with the new challenges presented by the war in Ukraine, the skills, knowledge, and experience of our graduates is even more essential. You could go as far as to say that there has never been a more important time to be graduating from Harper Adams University. The graduates in front of me today, I know, will make a vital contribution to the world's ability to achieve food sustainability and net zero emissions in agriculture and food and ensure the well-being of our animals and also the tendering of our lands. We all need to step up. All departments and people in this university are doing so. Through our new School of Sustainable Food and Farming, we'll continue to work with industry to ensure that there is access to the scientific knowledge and practical skills required to modernize and flourish. And through our future farm, we'll provide a living, working demonstration of modern progressive agriculture, sharing our learning and innovations in the UK and overseas. I was delighted yesterday to welcome and, and then say goodbye 
to students who've been part of a program that we do with the Marshall Papworth Foundation from Malawi, Ghana, and Kenya. The skills of this farm being taken to Africa, that is what global leadership looks like. Finally, I want to reflect on what Thomas, Har <coughs> Thomas Harper Adams did in creating the legacy that established this institution. It is not a museum. It is a place of education, research, and insight. His aim was simple, to ensure that those who came here had the skills to make sure that agriculture and all other sectors connected to it thrived and remained relevant across all times and ages. The fact that we are here today celebrating this is an acknowledgement of that le legacy. The skills we teach, the knowledge we extend, they all matter, as do our values and our spirit. We strive for the university to be an inclusive to an ever diverse population of students and employees, and for everyone here to feel like they are belong and are respected. From wherever you came, you belong, you are respected. This is a responsibility on all of us, and it is one that you, as graduates, carry into your many and varied careers. All of these accolades we have celebrated today are richly deserved. But until we can secure a way for all people in our country and our world to have a sustainable route to high quality food, this job and this university is not done. I encourage you indeed, we need you, to continue to be an advocate and supporter for your university. We need you to strive to become pioneers within your chosen profession. In return, Harper Adams will stand by your side throughout your career. Let the pride we have in you today be a source of strength, encouragement, and comfort as you move forward. We are here for you, and we will always be with you. However challenging each step or any day is, you should never, ever feel alone. So now let me end my address where I started by reiterating once again our congratulations to every single one of you and all those who cannot be with us today. I wish you the very best of luck in everything you do, every decision you take, every choice you make. And I'm delighted to declare today's graduation celebration ceremony open. Thank you. It gives me great pleasure to announce the awards for the animal science courses. Firstly, the Bachelor of Science in Animal Behaviour and Welfare, Alexandra Nugent. <laughs> Bachelor of Science with Honours in Animal Behaviour and Welfare, with First Class Honours, Keeley Needham. First Class Honours, Georgia Westcott. <laughs> Lily Barboza. <laughs> Charlotte Barlow. <laughs> Lauren Bowen. Catherine Boomer. <laughs> Amelia Bunker. <laughs> Caitlin Cannon. <laughs> Naomi Clay. Danielle Cummings. Kimberly Edge.
Catherine Hayden. <laughs> Olivia James. <laughs> Amber Lowe. Isla Richards. <laughs> Hannah Roberts. <laughs> Eleanor Smith. <laughs> Leslie Sykes. Renfair Townsend. <laughs> Rebecca Townsend. <laughs> Emily Wallace. <laughs> Taylor Whitaker. Bachelor of Science with Honours in Animal Health and Welfare, Sean Morris. <laughs> Ella Redhead. <laughs> Amabella Wade. <laughs> and Ellie Wilson. Bachelor of Science with Honours in Animal Management, Health and Welfare, Sarah Bergman. <laughs> Jessica Clark. <laughs> Bachelor of Science with Honours in Animal Production Science with First Class Honours, David Galway. <laughs> Marid Ingram, Constance Reeves, and Fiona Wilshaw. Lauren Henry, Lucy Mason. Bachelor of Science with Honours in Animal Science, Alison Stewart. <laughs> Bachelor of Science with Honours in Bioveterinary Science with First Class Honours, Peter Rees. <laughs> and with First Class Honours, Emily Turner. <laughs> Jade Billing. Oinya Kaisley, <laughs> Stephanie Gamble, <laughs> Lydia Hayden, <laughs> Megan Hughes. Lena Jones, <laughs> Stephanie Knapp, <laughs> Rebecca Knight, <laughs> Olivia Lean, <laughs> Sophie Maydu. Holly McFadden, <laughs> Natasha McGregor, <laughs> K 
Caitlin Mackay. Emily Morgan. Lily Ann Pardo. Madeline Pearson. Chloe Roxborough. And Shannon Waite. This concludes the awards for the Animal Sciences. Congratulations to you all. It gives me great pleasure to announce the awards for the degree of Bachelor of Science with Honours in Veterinary Physiotherapy. With first class honours, Izzy Badham. <laughs> with first class honours, Alicia Basford. First class honours, Megan Beecroft. First class honours, Beth Field Harvey. First class honours, Hannah Goldney. With first class honours, Tash Hastings. First class honours, Jenny Lyons. The first class honours, Lily Nye. Hannah Bartlam and Loki. Lottie Bridal. <laughs> Leah Edwards. <laughs> Cy Ferguson. <laughs> Charlotte Goodall. Sarah Hope. <laughs> Victoria Lee. <laughs> Zoe McCall. <laughs> Justina Moha. Jessica Parsons. <laughs> Natalie Stanley. <laughs> Larissa Tilly. <laughs> and Kia Webster. Concludes the awards for veterinary physiotherapy. Well done, everyone. It gives me great pleasure to announce the awards for veterinary nursing. 
Graduate Certificate in Advanced Veterinary Nursing Anesthesia, Lucy Vernon. <laughs> Diploma in Advanced Veterinary Nursing, Bethany Hart. Bachelor of Science in Veterinary Nursing, Natasha Bignall. <laughs> Chloe Brown. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Veterinary Nursing with Companion Animal Behaviour, Jessica Leddington. Bachelor of Science with Honours in Veterinary Health Studies, Abigail Brewster. <laughs> Leah Payton. <laughs> Bachelor of Science with Honours in Veterinary Nursing with First Class Honours, Rachel McCartan. <laughs> Emily Clark. Amy Cooper. Charlotte Duke. Katie Fuller. Sydney Guscott. Molly Hill. <laughs> Bethany Hooper. <laughs> Rebecca Lee. <laughs> Katie Marshall. Emily Phillips, <laughs> Nicole Thacker, <laughs> Emily Wade, <laughs> Lucy Walker, Bachelor of Science with Honours in Veterinary Nursing with Advanced Standing, Lauren Jones. <laughs> Bachelor of Science with Honours in Veterinary Nursing with Companion Animal Behaviour, Ruth Broomhead. <laughs> Libby Dale. <laughs> Neve Degg. Leah Rulestone. <laughs> Bachelor of Science with Honours in Veterinary Nursing with Small Animal Rehabilitation with First Class Honours, Lisa Asprey. <laughs> with First Class Honours, Rebecca Atkinson. <laughs> with First Class Honours, Zoe Griffiths. With first class honours, Ellie Houston. With first class honours, Sean Joyce. With first class honours, Catherine McKinney. With first class honours, Charlotte Muggleton. With first class honours, Kimberly Selly. With first class honours, Anna Tailby. Claire Armstrong. Chloe Bentley. Zoe Bramham. 
Ewan Castles. <laughs> Rebecca Clegg. <laughs> Charlotte Coates. <laughs> Sophie Cummings. <laughs> Abby Foster. Amy Foster. <laughs> Chelsea Layton. <laughs> Elise Lonsdale. <laughs> Ella McEwen. <laughs> Grace Merriman. Grace Oakden. Amy Pickering. Victoria Rudland. Emily Spivey. Christina Tompkin. Huge congratulations to all our veterinary nurses. Please. <laughs> Please welcome Susan Howarth, representing the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons. It is a great pleasure and honour to be here with you today celebrating your graduation and leading, through, leading you through your declaration to join the RCVS Register of Veterinary Nurses and admitting you as associate members of the college, albeit a little late. The title of veterinary nurse is one to be proud of. Although veterinary nursing is a relatively young profession, it has come a long way since the original scheme of registered animal nursing auxiliaries at Rana's, which was introduced back in 1961. You are joining our profession during an unprecedented period of positive growth and change. Be proactive and engage with our profession and be instrumental in shaping its future. To get here today, you have passed numerous exams, assignments, OSCEs, which you might like to forget, um, and completed all the RCVS day one skills for veterinary nurses, which you will have been putting into practice um, in the last year. You should be extremely proud of that, all that hard work. Your admission to the RCVS register of veterinary nurses allows you to legally practice as a veterinary nurse, abiding by the VN code of professional conduct as an accountable professional. As veterinary nurses, you are an essential part of the veterinary team, working alongside your colleagues to ensure the health and welfare of your patients. You will make a positive difference on every shift you work. I'll now ask you, if you would, to stand in your seats, please. Come on, veterinary nurses. <laughs> um, if you would like to turn and face your family and guests, And then if you could repeat each line after me as a group, nice and loud, to raise the roof. I promise and solemnly declare that I will pursue the work of my profession with integrity and accept my responsibilities to the public, my clients and the profession. and the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons. And that above all, my constant endeavour will be to ensure the health and welfare of animals committed to my care. 
in the name of the College and the Council of the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, and by virtue of the power conferred upon them by the Royal Charter and by Acts of Parliament, I do by here admit to you as associates of the College, and by the same power do co confer upon you the right to be called registered veterinary nurses, and to be known and recognised henceforth as duly qualified members of the veterinary nursing profession. I congratulate you all and hope you continue with satisfying and challenging careers. Well done. It is my privilege to announce the awards for the Countryside, Environment and Wildlife suite of programmes. The degree of Bachelor of Science with Honours in Countryside Management with First Class Honours, Sophie Blur. With First Class Honours, Sam Matheson. Matthew Berg. Samuel Dawson. Zoe Downs. Christopher Merlane. James Warrington. Joe Western. and Richard Wilkinson. The degree of Bachelor of Science with Honours in Countryside and Environmental Management with First Class Honours, Oliver Mackay. Lucy Morris. Rebecca Pipes. The degree of Bachelor of Science with Honours in Geography and Environmental Management, Francis Christian Allen. Jessica Milbank. Ethan Richards. The degree of Bachelor of Science with Honours in Wildlife Conservation and Environmental Management with First Class Honours, Alexandra Bull. With First Class Honours, Molly Conway. With First Class Honours, Paige Fellows. With First Class Honours, Stephen Henderson. With First Class Honours, Georgina Kiniston. With First Class Honours, Becky Lewis. And with First Class Honours, Arabella, Arabella Seeger. Joseph Carroll. Jack Cresswell. Madeline Froggart. Ryan Melvin. And Eloise Moore. This concludes the awards for the Countryside, Environment and Wildlife suite of programmes. Many congratulations to you all.
It gives me great pleasure to announce the awards for Agribusiness, Agri-Food and Business. Foundation Science Degree in Agribusiness, Maddie Knowles. <laughs> Foundation Science Degree in Agri-Food Marketing with Business, awarded with distinction to Lydia Jones. <laughs> Eleanor Jones. <laughs> Dan Lucas. <laughs> Foundation Science Degree in Business Management with Marketing, awarded with distinction to Corinna Brisbane. With distinction to Joanna Green. With distinction to Morgan Pierce. Toby Miller. Bachelor of Science with Honours in Agribusiness, awarded with first class honours to Ryan Doble. With first class honours to Henry Grimwade. <laughs> with first class honours to Emily Jones. <laughs> with first class honours to Anest Lloyd. <laughs> with first class honours honours to Daniel Stones. <laughs> with first class honours to Megan Watkins. And with first class honours to Mariana Willemson. <laughs> Olivia Bamber. <laughs> Annabelle Beaumont. <laughs> Katie Brown. <laughs> Ellie Dugdale. <laughs> Georgina. Katie Hooley, <laughs> Lucy Jones, <laughs> Pippa Mansell, <laughs> Olivia Stones, <laughs> Verity Thompson, Bachelor of Science with Honours in Agri-Food Marketing with Business, awarded with First Class Honours to Claire Anderson. <laughs> with First Class Honours to Elizabeth Cook. <laughs> with First Class Honours to Jessica Downbrook. <laughs> and with First Class Honours to Elan Jones. Lydia Orcott, <laughs> Keris Davies, <laughs> Jessica England, <laughs> Eliza Hodgson, <laughs> Neves Lovett, <laughs> Emily Moore, <laughs> Kate Redding, Charlotte Thraves, <laughs> Sophie Veer, <laughs> Bachelor of Science with Honours in Business Management with Marketing, awarded with first class honours to William Ford, Bachelor of Science with Honours 
in agri-food marketing with business, awarded with first class honours, sorry, <laughs> awarded with first class honours uh, to William Ford. <laughs> Isabel Jump. <laughs> Alexandra Major. Catherine Rhodes. Anne Russell. Catherine Young. Lucy Baker. Megan Beanie. Katie Booth, Toby Caldicott, Eleanor Elmsley, Edward Gledson, Benjamin Mackay, Charlotte McFarland, Beth Walford, and Harry Wright. <laughs> this concludes the awards. This concludes the awards for the business degrees. Congratulations to everyone. I'm delighted to be able to announce the awards for the food programmes. Bachelor of Science with Honours in Food Manufacturing with Marketing, First Class, Charlotte McCready. First Class, Victoria Mumby. First Class, Ellie Way. Georgie Flower. Lucy Laster. Eloise Seaman. Bachelor of Science with Honours in Food Technology with Nutrition. First Class, Hannah Lloyd. Class, Amy Morgan. First class, Beth Shapko. First class, Laura Stewart. First class, Hannah Trollope. Daniel McCaw. <laughs> Molly Stradling. <laughs> Bachelor of Science with Honours in Food Technology and Product Development, First Class, Natalie Dool. Clemency Haynes. <laughs> Rachel Hart. <laughs> Chelsea Hillier. Hannah Jones. <laughs> Mary.
Megan Neal. <laughs> Ellie Parsons. <laughs> Marcia Rowlands Jones. <laughs> Amy Taylor. David Turner. <laughs> Zoe Watson. <laughs> Charles Whitaker. <laughs> Ryan Weiss. Massive congratulations to our fabulous food students. Well done, everyone. It gives me great pleasure to announce the awards for our joint program with Beijing University of Agriculture. Bachelor of Science with Honours in Food Quality with Retail Management. Cao Haixin. Han Yuting. Lu Yao. Qin Kexin. Wang Jianan. Zhang Kexin. Bachelor of Science with Honors in International Business Management. Deng Jiahan. This concludes the awards for the joint program with Beijing University of Agriculture. Now, I'm very pleased to announce the awards for the joint program with Huazhong Agriculture University, Bachelor of Science with Honors in International Agri-Food Marketing and Supply Chain Management. With first class honors, Pan Wanpeng. With with first class honors, Shi Yingjie. With first class honors, Wu Jiaming. With first class honors, Xue Yahan. With first class honors, Yuan Yu Hang. Shang Jingyan. Sun Zhilin. This concludes the awards for the joint program with Huazhong Agriculture University. Many congratulations to you all. The president of Beijing University of Agriculture, Professor Zhou Jianping, and the president of Huazhong Agriculture University, Professor Li Zhaohu, are not able to attend the graduation ceremony today. They send their congratulations and best wishes to you all and all the Harper Adams graduates. They have recorded their graduation speeches and they are available on the Harper Adams University website. It gives me great pleasure to announce the postgraduate awards. Beginning with the postgraduate certificate in advanced veterinary nursing and anesthesia to Rebecca Telfer. <laughs> the postgraduate certificate in human nutrition to Natalie Kersey. <laughs> the postgraduate diploma in veterinary physiotherapy to Genevieve Tomlinson.
the Master of Science in Data Science for Global Agriculture, Food, Environment at Distinction to Alex Doyle. <laughs> also at Distinction to Florence Galliers. <laughs> and at Distinction to Georgie Wager. <laughs> and Ottilie Mitchell. The Master of Science in Food Industry Management at Distinction to Claire Mike. <laughs> to Phoebe Heslop. <laughs> to Yvonne Easterhoust. <laughs> and Lara Widgenon. The Master of Science in International Agribusiness and Food Chain Management at Distinction to Mikhail Swinkles. <laughs> to Eleanor Andrews. <laughs> and to Niall Laffin. <laughs> Next, we have the Master of Science in Human Nutrition at Distinction to Alison Kellett. Also at distinction to Olivia Ward. <laughs> to Laura Friars. <laughs> to Louise Scott. <laughs> and to Joseph White. The Master of Science in Veterinary Pharmacy to Anna Broadburn. <laughs> the Master of Science in Veterinary Physiotherapy to Hannah Gill. <laughs> to Hayley Reynolds. <laughs> and to Harriet Wynne Stanley. It also gives me great pleasure to announce the High Awards by Research, the first Master of Research in Animal Reproduction Science at Distinction to Bethany morse Wolf. <laughs> and the Master of Research in Food Industry Management to Morgan Metcalf. Many congratulations to all the postgraduates. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Let's give everyone, including the dog, a massive round of applause. Congratulations. Everyone on the campus knows that I have uh, two Cavalier King Charles, so seeing one come up on stage uh, has definitely made this highly memorable. Our next um, speaker is alumna Harriet Wilson, who's had a very varied career in uh, agri-food marketing, uh, covering the co-op Aldi and more recently uh, McDonald's. And uh, she will talk to you today about the experience she's had since she graduated and uh, tell you more about her career. So please join me in welcoming Harriet. Good afternoon, everyone. Firstly, huge, huge congratulations um, on your graduation today. It's a real honour to be asked back to Harper Adams um, as, a, as an alumni and uh, having sat in your seat back in 2014. And it's certainly not been the easiest of journeys for you to get here, uh, but you've all come up here with smiles on your faces and there's such a huge sense of pride throughout this marquee. Now, I vowed not to use the C word. So instead, I'm going to talk to you about two words beginning with C, 
the challenge of change. Before coming here, I reflected on my time at Harper and my career journey so far. And the one constant for me was change. Changing career moves, business cultures, relationships, in agriculture, in consumer trends, and in life priorities. Everybody's version of a successful career is completely different, and it changes over time too. For me, success is about supporting British agriculture to thrive, and being proud of the story that our food has to tell. And I absolutely help, love helping others to amaze themselves at what they're capable of. I now work for McDonald's, as Ken said, um, and head up a really ambitious agriculture and sustainable sourcing team for the UK and Ireland business. I've been here for two years now, um, and it's actually a return for me because I, I completed my placement year with them whilst I was at Harper, which really inspired me to go back. And I think I'm really lucky because I'm in a fortunate position uh, because of the scale of the brand and the McDonald's culture of really walking the talk enables the work that I do uh, and my team does to make a significant impact and work towards how I define success. I've always been passionate about food and agriculture and I'm constantly inspired by the people who work in the industry particularly my fantastic network that I came out of Harper with, who are not only my friends, but also my mentors and my role models. But we all know that British farming is facing into some of the biggest challenge and change. And it's think, having to think differently about how we operate in the future if we're to reach our ambitious goal of net zero by 2040. At McDonald's, uh, we recently conducted some research, actually, with farmers last month, and two-thirds of them said that the climate, em climate emergency is changing the way that they farm, and a further fifth saying that we need an injection of new skills to improve our technical know-how. At the same time, we also conducted research with young people about their perceptions of careers in food, animal, and farming. Unfortunately, 75% of these said that they didn't see it as a career option because they simply don't know enough about it. 68% that they didn't believe that it was a career that gave them job satisfaction. And 64% said that there was a lack of role models in the industry. It's crucial that we secure a diverse talent pipeline for young people like yourselves. So we need to change the perception and we need to accelerate innovation which also brings me back here to Harper. Towards the end of last year, as Ken said, we set up the School of Sustainable Food and Farming, a joint initiative with Harper Adams, McDonald's, Morrison Supermarkets, and the National Farmers Union. We set this up to address the challenge with our aim to educate, inspire, and empower current and future farmers on their net zero journey. We're investing in innovation together, training opportunities, and later this year, we'll drill further into that research I spoke about to formulate a plan of how we can kickstart more careers for young people from a diverse range of backgrounds. And people want diverse careers too. In lots of cases, career ladders and jobs for life are now a thing of the past. Career paths are more irregular, where changing more frequently between roles, industries, or locations is becoming the new normal. They're not straightforward careers, and they therefore feel stressful and overwhelming. And this challenge of this change then requires us to build resilience. But we can only be more resilient if we know what we're working towards. So I have some broad questions for you to consider on your career journeys. Firstly, what is your success story? What does success look like for you within that? And where do you want to go for the future? Trying to define this can give you a sense of clarity in those challenging times. And secondly, probably most importantly, what tools have you got in your resiliency treasure chest? What are you great at and what strengths can you, what, how can you play to those strengths? What motivates you and gives you energy? And who have you got around you in your support network? 
Knowing what tools you have can really lift and drive you in those challenging times. When we think about resilience, many think it's about coping or manning up. But really, it's about your ability to bounce back. And you've absolutely managed to do that in the last couple of years. There's the ancient story of the oak tree and the reeds, where a giant oak stood near a brook, of, brook surrounded by reeds. When the wind blew, the great oak stood proudly upright and fought against the storm. But the reeds bowed low in the wind. The wind then redoubled in fury, and all at once the great tree fell, torn up by the roots, and lay among the pitying reeds, who bounced back tall after the storm had passed. The moral here is that it's better to bend and bounce back than to break. And so to ride the waves of challenge, of change, if you, want, you need a backpack full of knowledge, experience, supportive family, colleagues, role models, mentors, and networks like the ones that you have at Harper. So I'll end with a quote from a huge role model and pioneer in the industry who's already actually been mentioned, Caroline Drummond who sadly we recently lost. She said, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Congratulations on your graduation, and I look forward to seeing you develop as leaders who will shape together our future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Harriet, for uh, the inspiring words and also the very clear messages of what everyone can take from today. I rather wish you were at my graduation ceremony and uh, I'd had some of that advice to take into, into my career. But thank you for coming back. Uh, thank you for being with us and, and thank you for speaking. I'd now like to introduce uh, Emily Brown, who's just recently stepped down as president of the Students' Union here at Harper Adams, who will address you this morning. Thank you. Today we finally get the chance to celebrate and close this chapter of our lives and it's great to see so many of us back here today. I'd like to take a moment to remember those students who started this journey with our cohort and are no longer with us. However, they are here with us today in our hearts and sharing with us the Harper spirit. I would now like to propose a vote of thanks, firstly to our speaker, Harriet Wilson, Secondly, to the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Ken Sloan, and the Board of Governors for guiding the development of Harper Adams University, and for continuously looking at how we can strengthen and take the university into the future. Thirdly, I want to thank all of the lecturers and support staff who have given us the knowledge to succeed and take us out into industry to be the strongest graduates we can be. And a special thank you for keeping our attention during lectures and tutorials when our focus might have been a little hazy after one too many Vegas bombs in Aussies the night before. <laughs> and finally, I would like to thank parents, guardians and friends for the encouragement and the gentle nudges we've needed when times have got tough and believing in us when we might have doubted it ourselves. If I could please ask all my fellow graduates to stand and applaud to show your appreciation. You can now be seated, thank you. The Students' Union has organised a final send-off this evening um, in the barn starting at 9pm. That is the bar. Uh, it would be great to see as many of you there later as possible, and for those that haven't tried a power gin yet, I strongly advise it. Full send to the end. Uh, reach out and seize the future, and all it has to offer as a Harper graduate. I will leave you with a quote from Winnie the Pooh. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. Best wishes to everyone, and thank you.
Thank you so much, Emily. And can I just put on record uh, my thanks to Emily and also to Emily Wallace, who graduated uh, today, for the outstanding leadership of the Student Union uh, over the last 12 months. Uh, it's been a, a real pleasure for me. You were the first uh, sabbatical officers I've worked with uh, in this uh, institution since I took over as vice chancellor in November, uh, and I couldn't have asked for a better team. So thank you very much, Emily. So you'll be pleased to know we are coming to the end of the ceremony. Our final speaker is uh, Mr. Peter Nixon, who's the chair of our Board of Governors, and I'll hand over to him to close the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to add my heartiest and warmest congratulations um, to all those that have gone before to you graduates today. It's a really important today day for you. Um, and. Um, absolutely worthy of um, a great celebration. Um, I know we've all been waiting patiently for this event to happen, but I do hope you all feel as proud as I do um, of the achievements that we're marking today. I hope you'll join me in thanking the Vice Chancellor, the University staff, the Students' Union, for all the work that they've done in supporting our graduates during your studies. I'd also like to thank my fellow governors for the work that they do in ensuring that the university continues to make a practical and valuable contribution to addressing some of the real world challenges we all face. Everything rests on the preposition in what I'm now about to say. It's not what you are moving from now as graduates, but what you are moving to that will be your principal focus as you look ahead, and that's quite right. But I do like to think that whilst you might take Harper out of the person, you can't take the person out of Harper, or rather the other way around, <laughs> just to check you're awake. <laughs> you can't take Harper out of the person. And as you go forward, as the Vice Chancellor has said, please remember that the family of Harper is enduring and here to support you through thick and thin. Um, as Harriet said in her excellent speech, change is something we all have to face. The only certainty in future is uncertainty. Life is connected in so many ways, and if only you can see those connections, you can make huge strides forward. The best way of making connections is to stay in contact with the university, with the lifelong friends you will have made here, developing your knowledge so that your ability to understand the complex and ever-changing world in which we live is relevant to your particular focus of study. Um, so please do remain in contact with the alumni organization um, and all the other forms of support networks that will exist. Remember, the world is now your oyster. Never, never has the world been more in need of the skills that you possess to meet the challenges of society, just as Harriet has said. Um, and you're in a brilliant position to be making a real difference to the world. But what I would say, above all, as you now start to embark on your new careers is, please, please, have fun. <laughs> I am conscious that I am now all that stand between you and your refreshments, so you'll be delighted to know I hereby formally declare this ceremony closed. Um, could you all please, in a moment, be upstanding for the national anthem um, and then remain upstanding whilst the procession departs? And could I encourage everybody please to sing during the national anthem? I'm sure you do know the words. Thank you. <laughs>